This is a quick introduction to the SmartCount SC18. Current runtime. This field displays the current time in hours, minutes, and seconds that the system has been receiving pulses. Total runtime. This field displays the current time in hours, minutes, and seconds since the last reset of the device. Actual count. The input of a discrete pulse into the top M12 port of your smart count device will register as a count. Input devices can be a proximity sensor, PLC, push button, or foot pedal. By selecting the keyboard icon, you can start you can select your starting number. When the smart count controller has not received a pulse within the number of seconds selected for the timeout setting on the settings page, three shot clock timers will engage. Current downtime for the current event, total downtime since the controller was last reset, and you can select a downtime status for the reason there is a break in production. So if they were at break, they could go into break. You'll notice time in this bucket. It aggregates over time since the last reset. So you can set the titles for these under languages and the colors for them under settings. There are three ways to reset the values right click on the screen and select clear values or if you have a touch screen you'd touch on that you can also go to the settings screen and navigate to the reset data field and click or touch the reset data button and the third way is to press and hold the push button on the controller box for five seconds let's review the settings page count multiplier. By default the system is set for a one-to-one -one ratio. However, if you had a box with 10 items in it, you can set this field to 10 and the system will increment by 10. For the multiplier, if you want to use a decimal for units less than a whole number of one, you need to lead with a zero and a period. Time out. We spoke about this a little earlier. This field is in seconds. The system is expecting a pulse to increment the appropriate fields. The number of seconds in this field have passed. The timer will engage. Time out. This field is in seconds. The system is expecting a pulse to increment the appropriate fields. After the number of seconds in this field have passed, a timer will engage. Sensors. This section is for customers using two metal contacts in an electronic device to generate a pulse. The debounce settings can be altered to ensure an accurate count. Time of day. When the system time enabled box is checked, you can come in and change these settings. You'd want to navigate to what you want and click the check box. Total downtime. You can customize the background color of these fields by time here. As you can see for total downtime, I currently have it set to be red all the time. The same is true for count downtime, current runtime, and total runtime. Under this setting you can see that I have it for green for an hour, blue for two hours, after two hours yellow, and then red. Downtime status, you can come in here and 
you will lab change these labels under languages, but here you'll select the color and whether that is steady or flashes. Let's review the languages pages. All of the text fields on your Smart Count controller can easily be changed. Simply find the field you'd like to change and enter the text that you would like to be displayed. The field is automatically updated and to restore the field you remove your custom text. For example, let's go to Actual Count, change that to Tires. And you can see here it's changed. Go back to Languages, clear that field. It'll go back to Actual Count. This has been a quick introduction to the SC-18.